A journey through Balaclava, St. Elizabeth, might lead you to Bogue Hill Dairy Farm, founded in 1960. This small family-owned operation is set to revolutionize Jamaica's dairy sector through the Gerlando project. I am Aubrey Taylor, known by that name, showing cat dairy, Holsteins over the years at Demby and all that. And I am the owner of this farm. I inherited it from my late father 28 years ago. So I have continued. As a matter of fact, I have intensified the breeding of Holsteins. And I must say, and other persons who have visited will admit that these Holsteins will match up to Holsteins anywhere in the world. So it's their plane of nutrition, health care. They are not sickly animals, believe you me. My calf mortality is down to about 1% per year. And that's excellent. That's excellent when it comes to calf rearing. Well, they do have Holsteins in, in Costa Rica, but they use them at higher altitudes. And at that, at, they do get up to 30 liters per cow. But what they found on the lower plains, like elevations that what we have here at Bow Hill and in other areas of Jamaica that most of our dairy cows are concentrated on, they found that the Holsteins just didn't do as well. They found that the gir, the Girlanders, and, uh, and what they saw from their experiences in Brazil would do up to 50, well, at least 15 liters, they would do without much difficulty. Um, with the same level of care as the Holsteins and the same level of, of, of cold comfort. One of the drawbacks with the Holstein breed, in, it's a temperate climate breed, but rearing them in a tropical country like Jamaica, heat, heat control, it's a factor that um, affects milk production. I tried in the past introducing the Jamaica Hope, but I was not successful in getting the results I wanted. Heat tolerance in the, my local Holsteins. When you look at where we're going with global warming and the, 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 the expected increase in global temperatures over three degrees in the next 20, 30 years, what we're realizing that we have to find a breed that can well, adapt to this, this, this global warming. You either increase cold comfort and animals are forced to, to be more or less in barns or you have an animal that can adapt to the change in terms of the heat. And what the Brazilian dairy farmers do is that they cross it in the plains of Brazil, the lowlands, they cross the girl with the Holstein. The offspring, the results of that cross affords a certain amount of heat tolerance. So these animals that you see here, these calves, supposed to be a lot more heat tolerant than those black and whites out there. This breed is, is gives you persistence. So you're gonna get up to 12 lactations from these breeds. They're strong legs, they're, they're good converters of, 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 of poor quality forage. They're good at heat tolerance. So you're getting a breed that is a bonus, not only in production, where even the salvage value of these animals, because they are big animals and they have a little more flesh on them when they're actually sold to the butcher after they have done their time in the parlor, you're getting more money in returns for them. And I must most blow my own trumpet. I'm the first farmer in Jamaica to be doing this cross because we believe that this, I believe that this is the way to go. So we were in a journey with five calves out of, out of the group and these calves were selected randomly. But I have, a, I have a special calf in that group because she was born with an umbilical hernia. Quite significant. I mean, at, at, at birth, she had probably, you know, it's a hernia ring of upwards of 10 centimeters. So we had to do surgery um, within the first three days. And she's special because, of course, she born a little smaller and seemed to be at a disadvantage early in her life. So we want to put her in that group so we can follow her through to, to when she starts um, lactating, hopefully within three years. And the others, we choose in different colors, and these colors are from different bulls, because they, we use three bulls, and these bulls, based on their markings, influence the markings of the calves. So we're looking at also 
Um, the typical Girlando is a black, speckled, white animal. That's what you, you, you associate with a Girlando. But because it's an F1 cross and bulls are of different colors, then we choose some brown, some speckled um, black, and of course the one with the hernia for just to follow her along, see how well she'll do. There's no doubt about it. You'd never see a Jamaica hope heifer the size of these animals at this age. These are basically just around seven weeks, the oldest one, and going down to maybe four weeks, the smallest one in the group. These are fed by the mothers, you know, they are foster mothers. So each, there's a cow that will suckle two, three of them at a time, and then they get hyper calf starter as supplement feed. And this, will con this program will continue until they are about 10 weeks old. Then they will be introduced to grass and all that. After the calves are born, there are critical husbandry practices to ensure their good health and growth performance. The calves don't like to be treated in isolation, so for some of the more difficult procedures, the Gerlando calf is accompanied by a comfort calf to reduce the feeling of isolation and keep them calm until the process is complete. So the vaccine using Cobex in 80 can be given either subcutaneously or intramuscularly. I'm going to be going subcutaneously. Compared to the Holstein, the tighter in terms of have less skin available skin, you can see easily you can pull up a lot of skin on the Guerlando and that helps to cool the animal very quickly. Although the Holstein calf is present to ensure the comfort of the Gerlando calf, the Holstein is clearly feeling the effects of the heat more acutely, as indicated by its respiration rate and the faster contraction of its flanks. During the month of May, that was the first batch of heifers that were synchronized and artificially inseminated with sex semen. We ended up with 18 calves in all, two bulls, 16 heifers. The second batch has started to calve since last week. But we are so far, we have had eight heifers and one bull calf about 20 minutes ago. Well, when a cow gives birth to a calf, these girl and the calves, are extremely strong. Within 15 minutes or so, they are up and nursing their mother. Unlike other breeds like the Holstein, the Jamaica, they take a little longer. But, and it's very important that the calves nurse their mothers within a half hour or so because that first milk, the colostrum, it has antibodies that covers the calf against certain infectious diseases such as pneumonia. So we find that these calves are doing, the girl and the calves are doing extremely well in day of their own, getting up, nursing their mothers to ensure that, that what I just mentioned happens. One of the greatest concerns and one of the greatest criticisms of the girl and How can the calf, I have a birth, uh, a calf that is sired by a gear bull? And what we are seeing at the birth weights are around about 60 to 70 pounds, which is well within a uh, comfort zone of a heifer to have it, to, to, in terms of calving needs. So there's no real issue in terms of, of, of a dystopia or any real concern so far. Even the bull calves are coming at a reasonable weight, um, under 100 pounds. So, so far we have three bull calves, and those calves, are, those calves will be grown out to use as herd sires to introduce. So slowly, it will take many years, 
But there will be a gradual, I've made up my mind, I've taken that firm decision that I'm shifting to the girl and us, <clears throat> which my reason for taking that decision is if we remember what transpired at the other farm with those young calves, we could definitely see that those two Halstein calves were under heat stress while the girl and there was nothing like that. They were normal breathing and all that. So, therefore, that means I'll get more milk out of those. And that's the whole purpose of doing this thing, to get as much milk as we can. In 1992, approximately 600 dairy farmers produced 38.2 million liters of milk. By 2015, production levels had dropped to 12 million liters produced by 200 dairy farmers operating within an ailing sector. More recently, with the increase in the cost of powdered milk, local dairy farmers realized that by harnessing improved genetics and better feeding practices, they could operate more efficiently and competitively. During 2020, 40 million liters of milk was produced by less than 100 dairy farmers. Hmm, interesting. More milk coming from fewer producers, like Bogue Hill Dairies. This is month four in relation to the progress of the Gurlanders in Jamaica. I have been observing that these animals seem to be what I would describe as a community type animal. They group together, they graze closely together, they sleep closely together at night. So they, they move, they move as a group, unlike the Holsteins that I was quite familiar with before. Well, they grow much faster. They don't carry um, ticks as the others. I am observing that also, and it's a good thing because we have two tick-borne diseases in Jamaica, and if they don't take ticks, then they're not going to come down with those diseases. And it, at the cost of the chemicals to control ticks, is getting more and more expensive even to apply to the animals. So this definitely is going to cut costs in the animal care. Them all right, man. We deal with them properly, man. We deal with them like a baby. Now the girl and the cats, them are very different, you know, because them grow faster than the next one. They eat more, I think, they eat, they eat more. And they have a bigger, bigger body than the others. And they look to me taller than the others. Another thing I observe is that they are very strong on their feet. They have straight, strong feet, if we look at that one in the front there. They sometimes, you know, have bent hocks and knees and all that. But these are straight, sturdy, shows that they will do well in walking from pasture to milking parlor. So that's a good trait also. Them never so hard to deal with, you know. But we we'll take my time till we get them, get them to as home we want them. So them, them all right, well comfortable, you know. I mentioned it in one of the earlier interviews that their respiration rate is not like the Holsteins. The Holsteins have shallow, rapid breathing. These quite natural. That shows that they are very heat tolerant, which is just what a deer farmer like I would want in Jamaica because we are in the tropics. So. It just said it's to continue their development. You know, calf starter is up to a certain age that has more proteins in it. So as for skeletal development, muscular development, the heifer developer will continue to develop these animals. I believe until they have their first calves, then they, they will go on to um, the dairy ration when they start to lactate, produce milk. The mammary development of these young calves is looking good. A lot of folds of flesh between the back legs, which is a good indicator of the udder. We call it udder when the cows start to produce milk. The udder 
that they have the potential to produce a lot of milk. Join us as we follow the progress of the five chosen calves and the growth of the Bogue Hill Gerlando herd.